Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is... <laughs> what was that? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I was like real serious that time. Do it again. I'm hot and sweaty. That's what it is. <laughs> All right. Once again, from the top. <laughs> you were like staring right at me You're... <laughs> when I said it. So I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. And this is recording. Said it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more time. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Gold Tea. <laughs> 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 Hello and welcome to Gold Tea Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guy. It's a phenomenon that was my <laughs> Hey, Sorry, but we were having some fun <laughs> right before we started recording. This is a fun episode of <laughs> Go With The Heat podcast. So we're, as you can tell, we're keeping it loose. We also might be a little drunk. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> hey, this week, a little different. We like to have season look back and a look ahead. And that's what we did last week. So this week is my single favorite episode of our podcast that we do every single season, which we've done three of them now, which is the clip show. And it's not clip show as in our clips from Miami Vice. It's clip show from the Go With The Heat podcast. As you know, if you're a routine listener of this show, things get silly <laughs> on this podcast. One way to say it. <laughs> so if you like to look back and see like, hey, how much fun did we have during season four of Miami Vice? Before we get started, we do want to check in and see, hey, now that we've had a chance to think about it, the season's over, we've looked back at season four, we've looked ahead to season five. What were some of our favorite moments from season four? We want to talk about those favorite moments, and then we'll get to that clip show. Just a reminder, because you're not going to hear this at the end of the episode. We do love your support. We would love to hear from you. Contact us, go with the heat at gmail.com. We would love, love, love to hear from you. These clips were picked by us and some people who had emailed us. And so these are what we think are our favorite moments from season four. But we would still love to hear from you. What is your favorite stuff from season four? What should we look forward to this season five? Also, we would love for you to check out that website, GoWithTheHeat.com. You can find all the ways that you can support us. Support step number one, email us. Support step number two, go to your podcast, your platform of choice, especially if you listen to us on iTunes, and go give us a five-star review. Don't write a review. Go in there and talk about the Rastafarian popsicles and how much you love them. We just want to say how much we appreciate everyone who listens to this show. Everyone who has a lot of fun with Miami Vice along with us. Now, without further ado, let's talk about some of our favorite moments from season four. Then we'll get to that clip show. This season, as we talked about last week, too, has a lot of silliness. And I mentioned the Rastafarian popsicle. And that's easily got to be everyone. One of everyone's favorite moments from the season does it have to be no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yes no it was very silly <laughs> just the clip of stan dragging the freezer tube <laughs> yes. around in the precinct that's the best uh. part. Like, no move it over here no stan you got to move it over there now <laughs> schlepping it around <laughs> There's also the inconsistent well, thank length. Thank you, Dom. This isn't previously recorded at all. <laughs> One of my favorite moments was in insert episode here where Melissa <laughs> said, and I thought that was just so hilarious. All right, fine. Back to you. You got us. We do also pre-recording this two weeks ahead of time so we can take a much needed <laughs> week off. You got me. You got me. <laughs> We also did talk about a lot of this stuff last week. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've had time to think about it and all, and we reviewed all of those episodes and we had a lot of fun talking about some of the other things that came up in the season that you forgot about. Like, oh yeah, that's right. The whore train was in season <laughs> the four. Whore, the whore train <laughs> pulled into town. <laughs> hey, come on, let's be politically correct, guys. The Escort Express. <laughs> I mean, just a few weeks ago, we got the great character of Manolo took time to show Crockett his prize cock. <laughs> that is true. There's also the episode where Crockett almost lost his prize cock. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was terrible. Luckily. <laughs> there was vibrators. Luckily, that's where... It... <laughs> yes, yeah. Luckily, she wasn't trying to cut it off. She was trying to stick vibrator <laughs> up somewhere. We, did, we didn't know about the hygiene of that one either. <laughs> so don't trust that. So 
this was a lot of fun. We were also really, really hard on the whole Vice gang about the whole no personal vendettas, but only reason work ever gets done is because of personal vendettas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everybody uh-huh. has had a personal vendetta. It's like All the episodes are devoted to those, each individual person. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> what was called around tubs, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you. And here's my biggest disappointment of season four. You ready for it? Elvis wasn't part of the clip show. I know. What's what up? There? What's up, my advice? Is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why? Maybe they haven't told Crockett. Maybe they told him he went to a farm and he's like <laughs> running around or something. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's, I just, it's not like a goldfish. Like, they can't just flush him down the toilet. <laughs> they just like... Throw him out the boat? Like, is he just, like, floating down? (laughs) Somewhere there's a... Somewhere Elvis is floating across the ocean, you know, out with a a gay gay popsicle. (laughs) I just had a picture in my head of Elvis in the freezer tube. (laughs) But with a (laughs) safari and sunglasses and a hat. (laughs) His mouth is open in there. We've had a lot of fun with season four. Upcoming is going to be our favorite moments of our podcast from season four. Really silly. A lot of fun. It was great going back through all of these clips and hearing all these again. The season, because we only do one episode a week, the season gets really spread out. So we kind of really forget what happens in a lot of these episodes. And so when you listen to them again, it's like, oh, yeah, this is a great trip down memory lane. Remember in these episodes, because it took us almost five months to go through the entire season. When we were going back through them, going back and looking at like some of the first episodes of the season, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot about that one, too. Child's Play was one that, that I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Crockett di- does kill like a 13 year old. <laughs> <laughs> So these clips are some of our favorite moments from season four. Episode 14, Baseballs of Death. You had to drop off the Maserati at the rental place. And then you <laughs> have to get on. And, and, you know, they have those shuttles, but, you know, they're like every 20 minutes. And who wants to wait? Just catch a cab. <laughs> also, he murdered his driver. So, you know, true. there's a problem with that. <laughs> so Ernesto goes up and starts waiting in line. And the vice team is spread out all over the place. They're the worst people at hide and seek, especially Switek. I was going to say, what are you going to call out? <laughs> Cowboy Tub or Switek? <laughs> because he looks over his shoulder and sees Switek standing in the corner holding his radio. <laughs> <laughs> he never learned to do magic, okay? He's still trying. He cannot blend in. They have- Episode 4 The Big Thaw. Speaking of uncomfortableness. Let's go to the bandmate's house and let the stereotypes begin. Yeah, that was kind of bad. (laughs) Miami's face Jamaica town. (laughs) Just a bunch of blue car banana farmers. (laughs) It, It is. It's like the most Jamaican racist stereotypes ever. Not only are they singing the entire time, they everywhere that this band goes, all they do is sing. They're so relaxed, Reggae. too. They're, like, all happy. Like, yeah. whatever. We yes. don't care about our dead friend. <laughs> and also, they're, like, like in this scene, this kid's just shucking corn in the backyard. <laughs> hey, the corn isn't going to shuck itself, no, no, okay? The, and, and the, yeah. And the kids are, like, pulling bananas apart and stacking them in a pile <laughs> or something. <laughs> Are you saying, are you suggesting, Gun, that they are tallying bananas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am suggesting that they are tallying banana mom. That's why they made that song. <laughs> I always wondered what that meant. <laughs> so let's get back. Daylight come and we got to go home. Episode 11, Rock in a Hard Place straight at gordon and freemont's car who sees sunny and go oh shit <laughs> they're fa- oh my god gordon's face was the best thing about that whole entire episode he was like oh my god He's Don't in reverse, they run over some art installation that causes the car to flip sunny runs over pulls gordon out the car explodes killing freemont and then sunny reads gordon his rights and gordon's like you can't leave it you're a cop we can work something out <laughs> Driving reverse is hard, you know. It's almost like <laughs> things are coming at you from behind you. <laughs> the precinct, Sunny's on the phone with Caitlin. He's like, no, I miss you more. No, they're She's doing like, like, I miss you. Some He's like, gross no, I sex, miss sex you talk or something. 
And that's exactly. Yeah. It makes Gross. me really uncomfortable to listen to them talk to each other because it's always in this code of like the dirty ass shit they've done to each other. Yeah, he's like, oh, I don't even care. Oh, school. I know. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, what I do then, uh, handcuff you. <laughs> fortunate for us, the conversation gets interrupted because she was about to tell him where she was going to put that nightstick. <laughs> yeah. I think we got God a preview last week. <laughs> It's gross. <laughs> no, it's like listening to your parents talk to each other. Or something. It I is. It's really uncomfortable and really gross how they talk to each other. Yeah, I don't know why though. Why is it? Why do you think that is? Right now, but Sonny's just having phone sex with his wife in the middle of the precinct. <laughs> <I know>. Like, <laughs> you don't have a phone at home, okay? That boat doesn't have a phone. He's got a hooker line at <laughs> That's home. That's true. He can totally do it on the hooker <laughs> line. <laughs> Q's sex club montage. Sex. <laughs> Episode 18, Badge of Dishonor. And in the thing, Crockett are like... River. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Both Dad and Crockett are saying like, this is pretty coincidental. And Tubbs like, no way. I'm going to go down to Hoboville and go talk to her about this right now. Yeah, because the, today is Tubbs day to be an idiot. <laughs> and so like, I'm waving my hands around here because this is... I'm, I'm, I'm upset at Tubbs. Tubbs, you're my man. I love you, Tubbs. I, I have said continuously you are the second best police officer on that force other than trudy <laughs> you are a better police officer than sunny crockett you go down to hoboville you go talk to montana and then you tell her exactly what's happening <laughs> you're being investigated because it's coincidental that you happen to be <laughs> next to when all these murders happen well Why, luckily Tubbs? the Why? relationship goes both ways because apparently no one cares about leverage on this show also but is montana undercover name too or are they just <laughs> openly talking about being cops on the uh, uh, uh surrounded by the people she's undercover with <laughs> episode two amen send money when the duo catch him, they threaten to throw him off the roof until he gives them more information. And he says that he took money to lower the amperage restrictions through the breakers and the surge protectors so that everything would get damaged but wouldn't kill anyone. And that he also helped Mather get the audio into Faye's Walkman so that he would say that God told her to do it. These are all re- – my arms are waving above my head. These are all <laughs> real things that happened in this episode, that they planned this lightning strike <laughs> and that they sabotaged Faye's Walkman. So she thought God told her to set up Rico Tubbs for rape allegations to bring down Bill Bob. These are all facts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's. Let, all right, guys, let's just let's just wrap this up. Let's just go back to the hospital. We'll arrest Mathers and we'll just call it a night. Yeah, what do you yeah. say? He's, Can't get weirder than this. He's charged with criminal lightning. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to go criminal bring him lightning. In. <laughs> Episode three: Death of the Lady. Does have a boat, so you know. <laughs> oh yeah, and within within seconds of walking in, someone asks him if he's down the party, and it's like, "This is Sonny Crockett. Of course he's down the party." <laughs> <laughs> you meet Sonny Burnett down the party. Crockett's not okay. Sonny Burnett. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, so this is I love this scene because they get him in the booth and first he puts in two dollars and that gets him like 30 seconds. <laughs> and so then he continues the conversation at 50 cent increments. <laughs> All I could think was she until, was making nothing. I'm like, that's nothing. You until 50 spending a, <laughs> yeah, until spending a whopping three dollars so um <laughs> and, and for three dollars all we learn is that she's alive or at least we <laughs> she think she's is alive in fact alive <laughs> yeah they give him the old switcheroo in the peep show booth goes from one woman who he's trying to get information out of into Lori, the actress that they're looking for so she's fine everything's fine they also milked him uh, for a couple bucks <laughs> Unfortunately, Barnett ran out of quarters, so we couldn't <laughs> confirm that it was the same actress. <laughs> Episode 17, Hell Hath No Fury. Uh-huh. So then that night... She's Ellen... so polite, too, when she starts calling around for these assassins. <laughs> Hello, I'm looking for an assassin. Someone medium-priced. I'm flexible. Uh, there's no real time frame. She's also uh, doing it while at work at the school. So the little kid comes in and someone so poked me in the eye. <laughs> but she was that strong kid. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Ellen's trying to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
He was ready to fight. <laughs> All that lifted's paid off finally. <laughs> so now Ellen is going to go talk to Hatch. Hatch is her person that she found out of the back of American Mercenary, who is going to be the hitman or the assassin that's going to take care of her problem. Okay, but do you always beach. yes? Do you always stroll on the beach with your <laughs> with your in my hand, I, you do. Man, that was really weird. Let's take a non romantic stroll so, on the beach and talk about murder. <laughs> he's pretty reasonably repriced. I mean, six grand now, six grand later, and he only has one rule, and that's that she can't talk or he'll kill her. Like that's those are some pretty reasonable greats. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's episode twenty one. Deliver us from evil down hackman that was his his opportunity which made him do something really dumb we get another conversation between sunny and his wife where he pretty much just blows her off again he's telling her like oh, i can't pick you up from the airport she's like that's fine you know uh i'll see you at the show and he's like oh, i'm busy he's like well i'll see you next week he's like i'm busy i'll see you next year <laughs> maybe totally- next year but I'm, I'm busy she says like oh it's okay i'll see you at the show it's like no i can't come to the show I may not be able to come to the show because I shot a woman. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> she doesn't know her husband at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> How so, many women have you shot? Sonny? All that. <laughs> Does she know about the kitty shot, too? Projector <laughs> lighting is spotlight. The too. spotlight's up on top. Shoots and kills that person and pulls out a sniper rifle. He sees so, Caitlin performing on stage. And he sees Sunny backstage. Smiling like he's. <laughs> grinning from ear to ear so so he kills the guy working the spotlight and he's setting up the gun does he work the spotlight because the performance is still going <laughs> shoot her till the end of the performance and she's moving around the stage and the spotlight is following her so is he up there moving the spotlight around before he kills her episode 13 vote of confidence at Pierce's campaign headquarters, he's talking to his team. He's like, we got to buckle down. and I got to stop and... going to horse. <laughs> no, that never comes up. <laughs> that never comes up. No, no that's like, never oh. the problem. <laughs> Sleeping with the hooker is never the problem. It was that he got caught. You got to go to better hookers. Ones that don't drive their train right through town. <laughs> For everyone to see you on there. I told him to turn left. Go around. Don't these tracks go around town like every other train track? (laughs) I think the only thing that's really important about this scene is that we find out that his wife, Annie, is a trooper, apparently. (laughs) She don't care. (laughs) He's like, oh, she knows about this stuff. She's not. She don't want to sleep with me. She's happy I'm on the horse train. (laughs) Yeah. Two suits walk in and they want to talk to Crockett and quote Stubbs. <laughs> that was my favorite part. <laughs> I want to go talk to Crockett and, the, and Detective Stubbs. <laughs> Stubbs is already mad right away. I just from now on, Stubbs is for when Stubbs is like six inches shorter. <laughs> Stubbs. <laughs> His alter ego, Stubbs. <laughs> That's just so horrible. That's his whore train alter ego. <laughs> Stubbs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> one of the suits. Episode one, Contempt of Court. Now, we've been down this road with Stan before. There was this a is... hot dog to be eaten, okay? <laughs> he could not pay attention. <laughs> he did that trick where he lost one of his fingers and he couldn't figure out how to get it back. It was just <laughs> the whole afternoon was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> We've been down this road with Stan before where he has a hard time with surveillance. <laughs> Why do they keep letting him do it is the question. I feel like maybe he's just better with paperwork or something. And no one has the heart to tell him. Because I'm telling you, the only thing he's ever had good surveillance on is food. Those big giant hamburgers. Him and, when he noticed him that and clam Larry. shack? Yeah, the clam shack. The ones that the burgers him and Larry used yeah. to eat. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. He's really good at making that type of stuff disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so back inside, the judge has to rule it's a mistrial. Uh, there's jury tampering. Wah, wah. He has to allow bail because of the time in between the when the state will then reapply for, for another trial like mistrial case closed for now i just remembered that when they showed stan when he was following that juror like earlier he was at the hot dog stand <laughs> <laughs> he was literally eating a hot dog and then he like saw me like surveilling him while eating a hot dog so i was right he really was a hot dog 
<laughs> Outside. Episode six, God's work. Meanwhile, Sunny's just out cruising his boat, having fun. <laughs> Dude, I'm saying, this is Crockett's <laughs> idea of boat surveillance. I'm going to drive really fast in circles until someone sees me and chases me. <laughs> well, he was trying to get him out of the house. Well, he was like, no, I think what it is is like he was pretending like why his boat had to stop right there. He was just out yeah, for a oh, cruise yeah. and then it breaks down and he lifts it up and he's yeah. watching binoculars. So I text sees Felipe leave, but Francesco's men are watching him too. So then they take off after him and then Sonny the leads them on a him. chase. Sonny's having so much fun on that chase too. Don Johnson knows how to drive a boat, okay? Let's just get this straight. That was not a stunt double. <laughs> I, I want to point out that one, you don't need binoculars to fix a boat. Um, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> two, <laughs> two. You've never fixed and, a boat before. In, in a scene that I thought was supposed to be Sunny tailing the bad guy, turned into a Sunny chase montage. <laughs> and three, it ended in the most hilarious fashion <laughs> with. One of the Cruz brothers falling out of the boat and getting really wet, and then Crockett doing the most awesome thing and flipping around, coming back and honking and like I'm assuming flipping him off because that's the only thing that I could picture in my head. Yeah, and then then he's like the, the Cruz brothers like shaking his fist at him like I'll get you. First of all, like he didn't know who he is, so what what did he even do? They see- Episode 15, Indian Wars. Shows up out at the Big Cypress Reservation. He's undercover as, get this, person studying and writing a thesis on the free world that wants to work with the tribe to learn their ways. Not with that shirt, he's not. <laughs> he's got four buttons open. What kind of scholar is that? I don't know. I like nerdy tubs. With those glasses, though. <laughs> I, I really like nerdy tubs. <laughs> I don't know. He's not quite as good as Nerdy Crockett, though. Nerdy Crockett really pulls it off. He's got the glasses and the pocket protector that one time where he's sitting by the pool getting hookers. You know, I'm disappointed. I thought by season four, we would be getting multiple identities. We would be getting, like, nerdy Jamaican tubs. African (laughs) cowboy tubs. Swedish tubs. I thought we would get more and more into it, you know? And, and, And we didn't even get an accent with nerdy tubs. (laughs) <laughs> I came in because I, 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 I used the restroom. I come back. I'm like, is he Jamaican? He's like, no. <laughs> like, oh. Episode 22, Mirror Image. Like, hey, you okay? I want to make sure you rest up. And Sonny's like, look, man, I'm fine. I don't need to rest anymore. I'm into other activities in these stairs at Paulie. What's up, girl? <laughs> 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 then the men go outside and they go look at Manolo's chickens. His cock. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> Yeah, hey. Those were roosters. Hey, I know it's not. Word. We're not being insulting. <laughs> I, I know you're going to ask her. Manolo is a champion cockfighter. Yep. He's very accomplished in cock management. <laughs> you might say he grooms them. He grooms his cocks very well. He spends a lot of time with his prize cock. <laughs> it's all true. And not at all inappropriate. <laughs> Episode 8, Like a Hurricane. <laughs> and, you know, like, it was a long night, near-death experience. He had a shootout. The boat stuck. Like, okay, let's just shake it out. Let's calm down. Everyone be cool. Okay, tell me about what happened between you and Tommy. Like, oh, this guy, Will, that was also in the band. We had a lot of problems. He tried to sue Tommy, and then he showed up one day. Will was dead. And so now I always wanted to bring down Tommy. And Crockett's like, huh, okay. You want a bone? You kind of want a bone. <laughs> hey, no, she really wanted a bone. Yeah. He's like, slow down, girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is like the cri- This is like the Crockett trifecta. Uh, he just saved her life. She's trapped on a boat with him, and she's all vulnerable. Like, he's practically unbuttoning his shirt as he's putting his gun away. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. No. She does mention it at dinner, too. It's like, I better use that boat to get all kinds of women wet. Yeah, like, like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they start kissing, and then it starts going away fast. He tells her to slow down. And Melissa, like, we've been down this road before with Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> he does this with everybody he's involved in. Like, haven't you learned your lesson? A hooker and a drug a drug addict were not enough for you? <laughs> so, of course, night ends. Next day, Coast Guard picks him up. Everything's fine. They're on the docks. 
Crockett's like got his pants unbuttoned and his shirt totally open. And she's wearing his jacket yeah. and yeah. Tubbs is like, oh boy. We all know what would happen here. You went you went and bothered, oh, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> Episode 16, Honor Among Thieves. Big. Gotcha. But then they just leave Benny on the floor and leave him to his, you know, pedophile dealings. <laughs> well, I mean, I have questions. He was looking at a dirty magazine full of adult women, though. So I guess that crosses over. You can look at all of them. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I think what they're getting at is like, that's his crutch. Gotcha. That he looks at re- regular porn all the time. Like, that's his thing. So he's very friendly, though. I mean, to the staff when he was checking into his hotel. Yeah. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I got a bag full of porn. How are you doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess if I had a bag full of porn, I might be happy too. <laughs> yeah, bag full of porn and some bologna. It's gonna be a wonderful day. <laughs> Fascinating at the killers, at Delgado's, I should say. He's burning all of his dolls, so the paper is talking about the murders. It's a huge fire. Um, how, come there was, how come there was no uh, screaming? I... <laughs> there was no screaming when that fire went off. <laughs> <laughs> there should have been. He should have been. The dolls died in silence. <laughs> <laughs> he, should have been, he should have been going off in his doll voice like a hundred times over. Like, no, no. <laughs> I, was, I didn't even think about that. That's so crazy. Uh, all I was thinking the whole time is like, God, I hope he doesn't live in an apartment building. Like, this would suck. Yeah, because it went up fast, too. He said, whatever he put on that, yeah. he went up fast. But, I mean, all those thousands of screams would have been hurt. <laughs> but he kept the clown one, just for reference. Well, the clown ones yeah, are at yeah. the keep gym. that one. How was he going to dress up? Oh it's God. like he got another one. Like he went to his. Oh yeah, he went he to his. Got boot, another yeah. one. But but how was he going to dress that somebody up like that? <laughs> it's not a matter if poor also. planning. <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> Episode seven, missing hours. Crockett is very confused. He says, "Let's at least go identify the body." So he takes her down. The doctor's there. It we're waiting in the mortuary. He's like, "Okay, yep, here's the staff and got the chore, and it's empty." I like the way that he pulled it out and then he like looked back. Like maybe it just <laughs> fell back behind. <laughs> like your clothes in the trunk. Sometimes they like, fall between it. the seat. <laughs> like look further back and then and then Crockett looks back there too. Like is there like some secret way that they can just fall out or what? <laughs> well, you know, I mean if you close the drawer too forcefully, it, there's a huge gap back there. They just slide right back off. there. <laughs> It helps that they oil them up before they put them on the slab, you know, just to make sure. Also, like, how could you not tell by pulling it out there wasn't a person on it? Wouldn't it be like super, like, rip it open? No. <laughs> because you think it's heavy with a body? Uh, I, I, <laughs> like, fling it open. Is now, two, and this is the real part. This is the real serious where I'm going to defend this episode. Yes, this is the episode that jumped the shark. Yes, this is be- the beginning of the end. Vice is what people say. I don't believe them. <laughs> Sunny Burnett amnesia episodes are coming. All right. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I blame this episode on NBC. And this is not Vice's fault. This is not the writer's fault. This is not the actor's fault. This is on NBC. On January 20th, 1987, the same year this episode came out, Unsolved Mysteries hits NBC. And I think that it got into the executives' heads at NBC. And this is a hype episode for Unsolved Mysteries. Robert Stack, you ruined Vice. This is on you. <laughs> Talk ill. He's dead, man. He can't change it yeah, now. man. He's dead. It's totally a mystery, you know? <laughs> and now with Vice gone, we're never going to solve it. Oh, my God. Unsolved Mysteries was on Friday nights, too. Exactly. This was a hype episode for Unsolved Mysteries. It was NBC asking vice which was declining in ratings to do a pump episode for unsolved mysteries they did it about alien cults i'm surprised there wasn't crop circles in this episode mm-hmm. it led into the power hour which then is unsolved mysteries which to bring it all home in 2008 when it re-aired the person who was the host of unsolved mysteries was dennis farina <laughs> boom <laughs> episode 12 the cows of october down on the farm, cowboy tubs. Okay, so let's stop. Oh my let's god! Just, <laughs> let's just stop for a moment here. They are investigating 
a bowl semen problem in Miami. Both Switek and Tubbs go to set up a deal with the farm, this farm, to find out how they can get some really good bowl semen. So they're definitely clear to them, based on their conversation with the farmer, that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. But they're dressed as farmers trying to convince them that they do. But Switek kind of looks like a birthday party entertainer and yes. Tubbs looks like he's a stripper that works for the Thunder <laughs> Down Under. <laughs> oh my god. I thought he looked good. I was like, damn, Tubbs looks good as a cowboy. That's what I'm saying. It's like he looked good with yeah. his shirt unbuttoned. And yeah. he's like Buddy Chunder, he's from the land down under. <laughs> <laughs> the semen is i mean you know if you just ask nicely you might be able to get some <laughs> the problem is is they gave him giant cow sperm and it is very noticeably different than tiny cow sperm see tiny cow sperm is much smaller than giant cow sperm it's about the size of a catfish <laughs> i'm speculating <laughs> oh my that's a really weird form of measurement you are Episode 19, Blood and Roses. Uh -huh. So now we get the phone call between Gina and Frank. And at phone call is basically them flirting about him wanting her to decorate. Decorate me a bed so I can do you. You know, it's basically <laughs> the tone of the conversation. <laughs> it, it's the end of the conversation that gets me. He basically says, you know, hey, whatever you want, food. And, and Gina wants Red wine and manicotti. I mean, I guess manicotti underrated pasta, but I'm not going manicotti if I have a choice of <laughs> any kind of pasta. It has a pasta factory. You can go anywhere. Um, I, I, I'm probably going you tortellini. Can ziti, you can get rotini, spaghetti, fettuccine. I mean, like the noodle possibilities are endless here. You can even get the giant shells if you wanted. You go ravioli. You can get it. <laughs> just saying. Uh, yes, exact, I, I just feel manicotti is just lazy. I don't know. I, I, I'm going tortellini. <laughs> I'm going something with some, some curl to it. <laughs> the only thing I would say to you is if, if I'm Frank, I'd be, I'm nervous about going on a date with a woman that wants something that's so filling. <laughs> <laughs> she can't move after she eats it. It really comes off like she's, she's not there for the whole night. She's there just for dinner. <laughs> She's leaving because you can't you can't eat a manicotti and get busy later. It's not happening. No, there's no way you're gonna get. Episode twenty, a bullet for Crockett. Tubbs is now looking at his badge. Asian Doctor Stillman. <laughs> they hear over the intercom and they come rushing back to see Sunny being rushed back to the OR again. <laughs> I Melissa. can't. I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with that doctor? Why did he walk that way? <laughs> he looked like he pooped his pants. And he was walking with it. <laughs> I'm serious. It was like he was trying to hold something between his legs while he walked. <laughs> The this rash is spreading. This is, this is a huge emergency. The rash is spreading everywhere. Well, so if you're a dermatologist doing surgery, you try to sneak around a medical dictionary with you. That's just in case. Something. I'm telling you, there was something wrong with that lower half. You could not run right. Episode 9, The Rising Sun of Death. The doors slide open from behind him while he's in the hot tub and a man comes out. The ladies see their cue to leave, and he, the man, Agawa, as we find out later, grabs Avery, shoves him under the water, and we go to the opening credits. <laughs> what a way to die. Like, he yeah, thought so... it was a girl at first, too. It's like, <laughs> damn, that's a little hard, honey. Slow down back there. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible, man. I mean, being drowned in a hot tub. Do you know how dirty that water is? <laughs> no, it's ew. basically just drowned in man gravy. <laughs> yeah, because it's at a strip club. There's nothing but sperm in that thing. It's all jammed up in there. <laughs> Episode 10, Love at First Sight. Well, it's getting them. out of hand. So the F so now even the FBI has got to step in. So but, but now why? we're going to it beat the head of the FBI Penis Crimes Task Force. <laughs> Who hide behind trees and then pops out. <laughs> like He's like, yes. He's serious, guys. He's been doing this for 10 years. If you mess with a penis... <laughs> He's going to get you. 
But he's never caught the person. <laughs> he says that this person has done this in several other cities. Three people here, three people there, and then they move on. He hides behind a tree to tell you the knowledge. I don't understand that part. <laughs> You'd be surprised what what people look like who commit penis-related crimes. <laughs> Not your average person. <laughs> Not the guy hiding behind the tree because I thought he was suspicious all along. <laughs> Are we sure? Has anyone looked at the I know. There was a day I was like, watch. Watch. The FBI guy who spent 10 years hunting the penis murderer <laughs> is the one who's actually the penis murderer. He's so creepy the whole time, too. Also, he's like really attracted to Crockett and he's like making comments like, oh, all you pretty boys, you blonde haired, fair skinned. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got this assignment as a punishment, and then they just lost track of him, and he's just been gone yeah. for 10 years. <laughs> They're like, nah, just let him go. <laughs> Cut off my dick. Yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, uh, are you missing your whip? <laughs> uh, he closes his eyes. He's obviously cheating. He can see through his fingers. Well, she thank comes God. Down, something shiny in her hand when she gets close. He jumps up, punches her right She's in the face, pulls his him. gun, <laughs> and he sees and hears what it is. Hears it vibrating in her hand. Okay, and she's yelling at him, saying, like, what are you, some kind of maniac? She was coming at him with that thing. <laughs> what was she going to do with it? Why did she want I'm him to close his eyes? bum was not safe. No. It was an assault with a deadly <laughs> sex toy. I'm telling you, he did the right thing. What was she going to, what if she put it in his mouth? <laughs> You, know he just, I, you have to ask it. first. You just don't stick stuff up there. Hey, close your eyes and open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is never going to be okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> she deserved to be punched right in your face. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe she has good toy I'm hygiene. Telling you, okay, the but creepy the clown thing. should have been a giveaway. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I can just imagine Sunny sneaking the whole time. Please don't hurt my dick. Please don't hurt my dick. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> she just in his mouth. This is just a programming note reminder that we will be off for the next three weeks. We will be having reruns. Miami Vice style reruns. Summer reruns. Summer reruns. It's summer. While, yep. While we take a three week break and get some things situated and ready for season five and the hardcore storylines that are coming for us. We have some mental preparedness that we have to go through for season five. For the next three weeks, we're going to be show, we're going to be re-airing our favorite three Go With The Heat podcast episodes from season four. So it's going to hit your feed. We're going to be off three weeks. We will be back in a month. I can't believe I'm saying that, but we, we will be back in a month with the first episode of season five. We really hope that you enjoy this podcast. We really, really love your support. We love that you listen to it. We'd love to hear your feedback. Go with the heat at gmail.com. We're looking forward so much to season five, this clip show and our classic reruns. We really, really appreciate everyone that's going along this ride with us. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next month. Bye, pals.